next, we're continuing to follow two separate police shootings in two cities. The first out of Charlotte, North Carolina, where violent protests rocked the city overnight after a police officer killed a black man. Demonstrators damaged police cars and threw rocks and bottles at police, who in turn fired tear gas. That man, Keith Lamont Scott, was shot and killed by a plainclothes officer who is now on paid administrative leave. And that comes as another black man, Terrence Crutcher, died Friday in Tulsa, Oklahoma, after police responded to a report of a stalled vehicle. He was shot and killed by Officer Betty Shelby. Protesters want Officer Shelby to be fired and arrested. The state's governor called video of this shooting troubling. Gloria Brown Marshall is an author and associate professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and she joins us now. Good to see you. Too bad it's under these tragic circumstances. Uh, Gloria, I want to get your take on this. Activists in Charlotte on Wednesday called Scott's death a modern-day lynching. What do you make of that characterization? I think lynching was a horrible part of this country's history. And um, many people have been saying that police officers are using their weapons in a way to take black lives in extrajudicial manner, just like lynchings took lives before. I think they make a strong argument. And unless and until we as a society begin to give some answers, and that comes in a trial. So you're going to have heated statements like this because people don't get a chance to see the cross-examination of these officers in court. There's rarely an indictment and any type of, of impunity shown to these officers' actions only undermines our confidence in them. Looking specifically at the case in Charlotte, in that case, the uh, victim was shot by a black police officer. Does that at all change the dialogue versus if it was a white police officer? Some part of it is changed somewhat, but we've talked about this before. If you have a system whereby people are treated unfairly and you add to the, the system people of color, but you keep the system in place, the results are going to be very similar. And I think that's what happens when you have black officers in a system where people of color are treated unfairly. I would say there's also the question of whether or not this officer had the experience, what he, he saw. And once again, that's how the trial comes into effect. You do have certain people who, based on class and in other types of circumstances, look at another group of people with a type of fear they wouldn't have with a, you know, someone else who's Caucasian. And that officer could be African American and have those unbi those biased fears as well. Uh, and in Tulsa, Gloria, according to KOTV, uh, the, that's the CBS affiliate there in Tulsa, a police sergeant found a vial of potentially, they're saying it was PCP. Um, you know, the family is saying that's a distraction from the fact that he had his hands up, he was following the officer's orders. But could that be used in some way to either impugn his character or uh, to say, look, perhaps he was on this uh, hallucinogenic drug and that's why he perhaps didn't follow orders the way the officer is saying? Well, police officers are trained to deal with people who are high. They are trained to deal with people who don't follow rules. And in that training, none of it allows the death penalty an execution of the person if they don't follow the rules or if they happen to be high. Unfortunately, so many times the character of the victim is impugned in these discussions because we don't have a trial. We don't hear that much about the officers. We don't know their background, whether or not they took a drug test, if they've been drinking. We don't know that much about the officers at all. And this is, gives a free-for-all against the victim to undermine their, their image in the society. And almost like they deserve to be gunned down. We have a death penalty in this country, and this is not the way it's run. How does police training need to be reformed so that we see an improvement here and we see less shootings, hopefully no shootings at some point? Well, we need a training that allows us to see that we're not in a military zone. This, we're using military tactics in a civilian situation, and it's almost a them versus us. And as long as you see people, and especially people of color, as the enemy, and you think, shoot, before you think, what is this person doing? Are they drunk? Are they not understanding what I'm saying? But until we get the military out of the police, then we're going to have more of this. And they're being trained in ways that have these very militaristic responses to a civilian action. And until that training, it's almost an untraining. How do we untrain police so they can stop doing what they're, they've been trained to do in the past? We've got to do that. And we have to also look at our history. We have a history of tensions and race relations with police that goes back 
back a hundred years. And we have to undo some of that. So it's a matter of training people out of these responses that they've been given and allowed to do. And with impunity, and we have to say this, how do you, how do you take in a terrorist with a shooting in the leg? How do you have someone who walks into a theater in Colorado and they stand trial? The Boston bomber stands trial to find out if he's going to receive the death penalty, and yet these people are executed on the street. Uh, Gloria, I want to ask you, with regards to training, uh, there are reports that the, there, another officer on the scene pulled his taser and fired his taser uh, at the victim, whereas the officer who killed him had drawn her weapon, her, her revolver. Uh, that, if, as just putting on your legal hat for a moment, if you're looking at this, and we don't have all the information, the investigation is still ongoing, but if you're looking at that and you're saying, well, one officer carried out proper procedure, which was to use a taser against somebody who wasn't armed and the other one didn't. What do you make of that? I, I see that some people have a, a fear and they are, they're saying this person is going to present deadly force and I have to respond with deadly force. And that's the only time deadly force is supposed to be used. The U.S. Supreme Court has said very clearly that officers can only meet deadly force with deadly force. And so this idea that I fear for my life, that's where a trial comes in. Then explain to a jury why, what were the circumstances that made you fear for your life? And then having both of those officers testify as to what they saw in their individual capacity. All right. Gloria Brown Marshall, thank you. Thank you.